can Johnson make this? If he does, this is the biggest upset of the season. Are you kidding me? That was a sure bet. I can't pay rent. How am I gonna pay my tuition? How am I even gonna cover that? Am I gonna have to move back home? My parents are going to kill me. You can't control the game, you don't call the plays. Don't throw it away. Betting on sports can cost you what matters most. Call 888-ADMIT-IT. Welcome back. Today we've been exploring the diverse and unique culture here on the First Coast. In addition to great music and a vibrant nightlife, Jacksonville has an artistic side as well. Just in time for spring, the Riverside Arts Market had its grand opening March 5th. Austin Nichols was there with all the action. Take a look. Music fills the air as patrons from near and far gather underneath the Fuller Warren Bridge to experience the Riverside Arts Market. Here, crowds of people stroll along the riverfront to see what local vendors have to offer. Owls of Booths offer unique items including fresh organic produce, handmade clothing and jewelry, and festively decorated gourds. Well, I came out today to um, showcase some of my crochet artwork. Some unique accessories, hopefully. Um, hopefully I'll do well. <laughs> and there's plenty more to enjoy at the arts market, including food and entertainment. Today, it's particularly busy because it's the event's grand reopening. Sherry Smith says vendors are expecting a large turnout. Today you will because there are a lot more vendors than there usually are because there's been a gap. From December until March, there are no artists. So people are excited to see what new art we have this year. So you probably will see a lot more vendors this year. And it's great weather. Right. So. <laughs> vendors like Smith say they appreciate the arts market because it gives them the opportunity to publicly display their works without being dominated by big retail brands. It's so great because there's so many artists out here that you probably you wouldn't get to see otherwise. And it brings a lot of culture to Jacksonville. And while the Riverside Arts Market provides attendees with plenty of goods, entertainment, and art, it fosters both community and culture, too. One, two, three. Here we go! In dedication to the event's renowned success, Mayor John Payton is here to open a new 200-foot boat dock to provide Riverside access to future events. And it, of course, helps to celebrate the cultural diversity of our community and, and artistic talent. So all these things are working in great synergism. Uh, to be a catalyst for, I think, building a really relevant downtown that's going to become a place where people want to live, and want to work and recreate and enjoy their free times. Now in its third year, the event is still going strong and attracting attention. Accordingly, event attendees and vendors are on the rise. Well, what's really cool about the Riverside Arts Market is that it's the first thing of its kind in Jacksonville. We've had art festivals, but they're in and out in three days. Um, this is every single Saturday for the rest of your life. Uh, we operate March through December, but um, it's really a chance for local Jacksonvillians and um, vendors that are close to Jacksonville to come out, show off their homemade goods. Um, Riverside Arts Market is everything is made by the vendors that you see on site. Next Saturday, the arts market will be here for the local community to enjoy then and hopefully for years to come. Austin Nichols, Inside Jacksonville. Inside Arts Market is open every Saturday from 10 to 4. It runs until the end of December. For more information, simply search Riverside Arts Market on the web. Sounds good. And another popular art venue, one Jacksonville artist has taken his day job and turned it into a profitable hobby. David Smith has the story. Don Maxey's a hardworking guy. A Jacksonville native, he spent the last 30 years in construction as a sheet metal worker. But now, he's using his skill for a different purpose. A self-proclaimed copperhead, Don makes and sells copper art at the first Wednesday Art Walk in downtown Jacksonville. In fact, for the last three years, he's been crafting copper creations exclusively. Don says his work has continued to receive a positive response. It's been good. It's been good. Um, made a little money, but uh, and but mainly everybody really appreciates it. Really likes to see me working. Likes the the, the and the the different aspects of it as as far as in different stuff I can make and different uh, applications of the metal, different different techniques of working the metal. They really like it. So it's been good. Maxie says that for now, he's been able to remain successful and stay local while doing what he loves. 
done, we've done a little traveling out of town, but it's kind of expensive if you don't make enough money. And the setup fees in a lot of places are a little higher than, and so you're right here in, in town, it's, you know, doing good here. There's no reason to go look anywhere else. Popular local events like the First Wednesday Art Walk have given artists like Don Maxey a chance to showcase their work and gain some popularity. David Smith, Inside Jacksonville. For more information on Don Maxey's handcrafted copper art, visit copperheadmetalarts.com. Now, Mary, I have actually never been to the art work. Have, have you made it down there? Yeah, I actually usually go every month and have been for several years. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's, there's tons of things to do. These earrings are from Art Walk. Oh, that's so <laughs> a great. A lot of my jewelry is from Art Walk. I've got to make it down there. I hear such good things about it. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's great. Coming up, we'll introduce you to a college quintet that's hitting all the right notes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I wasn't born to sit behind a desk. In fact, I wasn't born to sit at all. I was born to take action to seize opportunities. I was born to use my strength and intelligence to protect my country. Right where it matters most, America's doorstep. I was born ready. GoCoastGuard.com slash reserve. When I joined the Florida National Guard, I never thought I'd be saving lives. It's more than money for college. It's built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. The Guard opened the door for me. Now I'm on a career path and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. Hurricanes are a fact of life in Florida. If you have a disability or special medical needs, you need to have a plan for when these storms threaten. Think the process through, write out your plan, and share your plan with family members or friends. You should be prepared to care for yourself independently for at least two weeks. Florida's Division of Emergency Management's website, floridadisaster.org, has a planning tool to help you and family members create your plan. It takes just a few minutes, and you can better protect yourself when a hurricane threatens. We have a musical send-off for you this morning, but first, we'd like to pat ourselves on the back just a little bit. The Florida Associated Press has recognized a story we did as a part of last November's Jaguars program as one of the best in the state. The story was called God or Football? Reporter Ed Coker examined the big dilemma during the NFL season. Go to church or go to the game. He may not look like it, but diehard tailgater John Short does both. John is a church greeter and a tailgate organizer, but other churchgoers may have different plans. Some of them do, and of course, I think some of them just skip the church on Sunday, but that's their own preference, you know. I prefer to go. I was raised that way, and I make sure I get to church every week because I know I need it. But is John the exception or the rule? An answer to this question can be found not too far from Everbank Field. He was lost and is found. Meet Father Fred Park. He's the pastor at Assumption Catholic Church on the south side. His parish has a pretty nice backyard. He knows there's definitely something different on NFL Sundays. Because we have that many masses, it does, it, it, no question, it changes though during the football season. Ed's story was one of the two finalists in the news features category. The winner will be announced at the Florida AP convention next month in Orlando. Ed graduated in December and he's now working as a photographer and editor at First Coast News. It's just great and really rewarding to see how somebody that was here last semester is just making it all the way to the top. And um, it was great to get to see Ed get better and better and yeah. better and now he's getting recognized. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. That's Good job, Ed. Another story coming straight out of UNF, but this time in the music department. If singing is your thing or you just like to hear beautiful voices, you'll want to take a look at this. Inside Jacksonville's Joe Carably shows us five UNF music majors who say they're living in perfect harmony. We were a part 
of a very large group and there was an opportunity to do a performance and we were the only ones who showed up and we went through it and everyone just went ballistic. So just five of us can make it so we started a new group. You really, you guys never get the brunt of it, man. Because it's always you. It's always us three. Y'all can't beat us. Yeah, we're just, we're very, very goofy. We're keeping it clean. We talk about food, we make fun of each other. It's the TBS. And then we sing. Mostly make fun of each other. And then we make fun of each other, and then we sing. And your hearts out to wonder where on this earth I could be. Thinking maybe you come back into this place that we need. I'm a big fan of acapella groups. I've, I've, I've always been that way. So it's it's been a dream of mine to sing in one. And the fact that I have this opportunity now when we started this group and our chemistry is, is there and it's it's a, it's a great thing. I like the acapella feel. The mm -hmm. fact that we can, as vocalists, portray instruments, maybe, you know, and to be able to have fun doing it. And it's more of a challenge to do singing without uh, accompaniment. All I always say is because we can't afford to pay a band is we're broke. It's, it's a powerful thing when you get it done just right like with the right amount, it's very powerful to just have the human voice alone. Thinking maybe you'll come back into this place that we meet And you see me waiting for you on the corner of the street So I'm not moving We've made a, a big impact on pretty much every crowd we sing in front of and, um, and I think that we can definitely take that out of city, out of state, out of country. It's just a matter of, you know, just pushing ourselves to the limit. The guys say they recognized each other's talents pretty quickly when they met. Mm -hmm. Now, Courtney, I hear you have a special connection to the Perfect Fits. I do. My fiancé, Nathan Edwards, was actually part of the group. He helped start it. He was a um, music major here. He sang tenor. He recently graduated last April, so they had to replace him. But I got to see a lot of them. So. Very cool. And they, they've all, they sound great. They do. Right. Love watching them. We hope you've enjoyed this month's show. If there's any topics you'd like to see on future shows, we want to hear from you. The best way to reach us is by email. Here's the address on your screen. It's insidejax at unf.edu. Again, that's insidejax at unf.edu. Thanks so much for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. We'll see you next time inside Jacksonville. Mm -hmm.